Hello and welcome to Reading with Carrie, Stories to Fall Asleep to, a mindfulness podcast series that can be used as a sleep aid or to ease your anxiety and relieve your stress. I am your host, Carrie Fable, and I am so thankful that you've decided to spend some time with me. Today's episode is themed on Aquarius, whose sign is the water bearer. Aquariuses are born between January 20th and February 18th. My sister, who goes by Phil Harbor online, is an Aquarius. Aquarius people are advanced, self-reliant, clever, exceptional, and optimistic. Air is their elemental sign. Aquarians, like air, lack a distinct form and appear to resist classification. Others are enthusiastic and active, while other Aquarians are calm and sensitive. Our validation space comes from Dwarak Peck. Members of the LGBTQ community are twice as likely as straight individuals to have a mental health condition. I won't begin to make assumptions, since I am not well-versed and educated, but I would make an educated guess that this would have to do with a lot of trauma and relationship turmoil that often happens for those who do come out, either their sexuality or their gender identity. And so this this makes a lot of sense, as unfortunate as it is. And once again, we are just called to have empathy and support the members of our society, I think. But enough of that, I have done a lot of preaching in the last few episodes, so I'll keep this one nice and short. But first, as always, let's start with a brief mindfulness meditation. Close your eyes and take a posture that is relaxed, taking care to keep your back and neck in alignment. As you get situated, really notice your body, feeling the weight of your body on the chair, the bed, the floor, or wherever you may be in this moment. Notice the position of your feet and any sensations you can feel with them. Locate your legs and the blunt pressure on whatever seat you are on. Feel any sensations in your arms and make sure your shoulders are soft. Where are your hands resting? What are they feeling? Acknowledge any tension that you feel in your muscles and allow your body to express itself, being present in the moment. Just be aware of the tension or whatever may be happening in your body. Simply note the communication with a simple thought of, I hear you, that's how it is right now. Bring your focus to your breath, but don't alter it in any way. Just feel your body's natural rhythm as you inhale and exhale. Feel the oxygen enter your lungs, that slight hitch between inhale and exhale, and the sensation of the air exiting your lungs with another micro moment between breaths. Let's extend our awareness to our mind. What thoughts or feelings or perceptions are present right now? Again, we are just noting these thoughts and feelings in this moment. Don't try to push or shut down any sense of discomfort or unpleasant feelings, but don't dwell on them either. Simply validate them with a simple acknowledgement, such as, that's okay, that's how it is right now. Keeping the connection you have with your body, reach your hands above your head, stretching your arms. Tense up the muscles as you breathe in and hold them in place for just a moment. And now, as you release the breath, relax your muscles and place your arms back to where they were resting comfortably before. Let's repeat this once more. Raising your hands above your head, tense your muscles in your arms and shoulders as you breathe in and hold the position as you hold your breath for just a short count of four. Then release your breath as you release your muscles and rest your arms back to where they were. Now focus back to your breathing and notice how you can relax by taking slow, deep breaths in and releasing your breath slowly out. Breathe in, hold your breath, and breathe out slowly. Breathe in, 
and out. Keep breathing deeply, gently, and slowly. Now notice your whole body as being present. Be aware of every part at once, as best you can, as you continue to softly and deeply breathe in and out. If you are preparing yourself for bed, continue to breathe in and out, and just listen to my voice, but do not follow. If you need to ready yourself to get back to your day, then let us now widen our spatial awareness by using our other senses. What sounds do you hear in the room, other than my voice? Are there any smells you can recognize? Feel the item on which you are resting with all of your body and imagine it in your mind. Try to picture it as accurately as you can without opening your eyes just yet. And now, take a deep breath in on an inhale of four. Hold your breath for a count of four. And on an audible sigh, release your breath as you open your eyes and fully come back. And now, here's the story. I took on this idea of theming our season three of this podcast around zodiac signs as a creative way to find stories and legends and fairy tales and fables and folklores that we might not necessarily already know. Uh, We are in episode 90, was it five, I think, 96? And so um, that's a lot of fairy tales. And I know not all of those, especially at the beginning first seasons, really had stories. Um, But I would definitely say I have at least said, you know, I have at least read 80 stories. And most of them are the ones that are well known. So when I came to Waterbearer, kind of like when I came to Virgin, I found that... um, there are stories lacking, you know, water bearer seems so very specific. Um, I kind of thought actually of the imagery of um, Mowgli Mo- yeah, from uh, the Jungle Book, um, very specifically, the animated Disney one where um, he sees the girl with the uh, the jug of water on her head. That's what I envisioned um ironically at first um and i really just i couldn't find anything that was a short story that had that element however i did find someone wrote um literally it is called aquarius the water bearer a myth based on the original greek legend so that is the story that we are reading today aquarius the water bearer a myth based on the original greek legend Once upon a time, in the ancient lands of Greece, long before water was spilled from glass or plastic, there lived the humble Ganymede. Ganymede was well-liked and beautiful in his ways. He was graceful yet eccentric, smart yet modest, and opinionated yet liked to keep to himself. He was disliked by his father, who had also been a handsome and loved man in his youth. It came as no surprise to many of the Greek gods when Ganymede caught the attention of Zeus, who was known to admire the intricate creations of man that he came to observe. After a few years living amongst his fellow Greek people, Ganymede's father was approached by Zeus. Zeus quickly offered the boy's father an unfathomable number of horses in exchange for the boy. Ganymede's father cackled to himself as he would have traded his son for a cup of wine. Again, it came as no surprise to the gods when Ganymede was then met by Zeus, disguised in the form of a stunning bird, to be swept away. Ganymede was so used to all the attention he received about his looks that he felt a strange wave of relief upon viewing something more beautiful and unique than himself. Of course, Ganymede had heard of Zeus and his abilities to turn into other things. And while he suspected something was strange about this creature that he had never seen nor heard of during his studies, he climbed on the bird's back as it knelt and gestured towards him. Ganymede's suspicions, however, were confirmed when the bird began to fly straight towards the heavens of Olympus. Upon entering these heavens, Ganymede was immediately set to work by Zeus. Ganymede's movements were so graceful, however, that Zeus thought it would be disgraceful to have Ganymede doing any hard labor. So Zeus asked that the boy bear the water for all gods in heavens. Day after day, Ganymede poured wine, juice, and water for all those that invited him, and didn't mind the time he was allowed to rest and be leisurely amongst the great Greek gods. 
One day, as Ganymede was pouring an unusually large amphora of wine for the queen of the gods, Hera, he noticed a plot of land underneath her room that boasted many horses galloping within a gated ring. He recognized the house as his wicked father's and sought immediate revenge on all who had betrayed him. He took the amphora and began to pour the liquid down onto the land. Hera saw this and smiled to herself. She did not stop Ganymede. Her silence, instead, inspired him to pour more. Ganymede poured and poured. As he poured, he also wept. He poured the wine. He poured the water. He poured the juices. He cried all over the Grecian hills surrounding his father's plot of land. Suddenly, the gates that held the horses broke against the weight of the rushing floods. The area was transformed, and Ganymede had nothing left in the amphora. There was now nothing left in any of the jugs or cups in Olympus. In his pain, he had poured all the liquid below. Upon seeing the floods, Zeus entered Hera's heavenly chamber and saw Ganymede surrounded by empty water vessels. He was about to reprimand Ganymede when he noticed a familiar look and smile on Hera's face. Zeus now realized that he had been selfish. Due to Ganymede's exposed grief, he approached Zeus. He asked Zeus to send him back to his land, to drown in his sadness, to live out the rest of his days in isolation. I cannot bear to pour one more drop, Ganymede the water bearer said. Zeus had realized the fault in his ways. His sympathy for Ganymede was great, and his love for Hera's wisdom was grand. And so, Zeus refused Ganymede's request. Instead, he granted him a great gift of even greater immortal status. Ganymede became the stars in the sky. The constellation Aquarius is where Ganymede is now. He observes exceptionally, and he gazes restfully at the water pouring out, beautifully with grace, on its own below him. Thank you for listening. If you would like to support this podcast and become a sponsor, you will find an Etsy link in the description below. Thank you for your consideration. I welcome you back anytime you may need to hear a comforting voice or a familiar bedtime story. 